So I already did a quick kit batch demo using this character and these cyber muscles, which you can find below. But I was asked if I could do it in Blender this time because last video was with ZBrush. So it's gonna be very similar, but I'm happy to indulge. So these are the actual kit bash elements and let me isolate them. So we added these with ZBrush using what they call the curve bend under the gizmo. But what we're gonna do is recreate these in Blender. So let's hide those and <laughs> we lost a little bit of weight, that's fine. So one of the advantages of doing this in Blender is that this cyber muscle pack was actually made in Blender. So we get the original blend file, which means we can just select something like Control C to copy, go over to this file, Control V to paste. And it's there somewhere, you can just press numpad period to zoom in on it. There you go. Before we move and rotate this into place, I wanna bring something up. So if you press comma and we use local orientation, which I will be using, and then I press R and then X, for example, to rotate in the X axis, you can see how the bottom connector is behaving strangely. And that's because this has its own uh, orientation already applied, 180 degrees. So I literally just duplicated the top and then rotated it downwards. So that's why uh, its orientation is different. So just control A, apply. And again, this is only a problem if you're using local orientation. But I just wanted to mention that so there are no surprises. So in my case, I already have a good scale, but you can obviously just press S and scale it like that. And uh, let's just move it into place. So we can rotate in screen space pressing R, but we can also double tap R and we get the sort of like trackball rotation instead. I'd recommend using a little bit of both. So maybe screen space, then maybe trackball like this. And uh, very handy to position things. And maybe at some point in the future, I want to look into collections and uh, maybe using uh, marked assets to sort of drag and drop these cyber muscle designs from the asset browser. But I don't know if they would automatically rotate to the surface. So I need to investigate. And you shouldn't buy this pack or uh, anything really based on future promises. Right now, what we can do is uh, place these with basic transformation tools. So again, because we're using local orientation, I can just pull on this and it's gonna go straight out. And uh, after you move it into place, we can do similar things to what we were doing in ZBrush. For example, we can widen the middle if we want. So I'm just gonna select the lattice and press tab, and then just scale this, or uh, scale it only in X, depending. Otherwise, it will scale in all directions. I know it's a little hard to see, like this, or scale in X, however you want. And uh, we can also use the curve deformer that's already there. So if you're having trouble selecting any of these, you can actually go to this little tab right here and you can disable selection for meshes. Just remember that you did that, otherwise you'll be thinking that Blender's bug and doesn't work. So I'm gonna do that. So now we won't be able to select any meshes at all and it makes selecting these curves and these lattices a lot easier. Just again, remember that you disable that. So we can move this over here. And a cool thing about curves, again, similar to ZBrush, is that we can also scale them here. We don't even need the lattice. I can press Alt-S and scale it like this, or I can press Control-T and twist it like this. And we can reset both of those. So if I press Control-T and twist it, and I change my mind, I can press Alt-T to reset it, or I can also Alt-Click, clear tilt. And as you can see, these hotkeys are right here, by the way. Now, if you wanna reset your radius, if you're uh, changing your your curve like this, then you, you, I think you have to do that specifically from here and set it back to one. I don't think there's a hotkey to reset the scale with Alt-S, unfortunately. So I'm gonna select this point, Control-T, okay, this point, Control-T, something like that. So you don't actually need both of these modifiers. You can do all of this with just the lattice or with just the curve, but, uh, I don't know, I guess I just sort of like keeping things separate. So I like controlling the width or the taper with the lattice and the curvature and, and twisting with the curve. But uh, I could, for example, delete the lattice and just handle the scaling with this. But I, I would need a, a few more uh, curve points to, to get it looking exactly as I had with the lattice. So I'm not gonna do the whole character because that would be the third time I do it. <laughs> I think you guys get the idea by now. The process is very similar regardless of uh, what software you're using. But a few more things I wanna cover. For example, let's say I like this design and I wanna just duplicate it and use it again to fill in this final gap. If you press Shift D, this happens and it's not really working the way you might want it to. So that's because Shift D is only duplicating the mesh. It doesn't care about the lattice or the curve that were already there. 
So you can either also select the curve and the lattice, which might be a little bit difficult because they're inside the mesh somewhere and we can't see them. Or you can do something like this. Select the mesh, control C, control V. And if we move it over here, you can see that we automatically have the lattice and the curve, even though we didn't select those at all. That's because copy pasting automatically looks at the relations or the dependencies that the objects have with one another. And in this case, this object needed this lattice to maintain that shape and this curve. So that's why it's sometimes better to copy paste than it is to shift D. So copy paste, here you go, a lot faster. And uh, in this case, we didn't uh, select the connector, but that's fine, you can't even see it anyway. But how do we create our own deformers, our own lattice, our own curve, or whatever deformer you want to use to shape these cyber muscles? So that's what this top collection is for. As you can see, they're very straight, so that you can deform them however you want. But let me just say this right now. Doing it with Vanilla Blender is very, very frustrating and very time consuming. So what I would recommend and what I use all the time are scripts. So I have a script that when you select objects like this, you can see these are separate objects. I just select them all, type in arm lat. I don't type in the full name and I'm running this arm with lattice script. I'll do that and it automatically creates a lattice that is shaped to the dimensions of my selection. And it does everything you need it. As you can see, it's already a uh, the mesh is already bound to the lattice deformer. And similarly, I have another script that does the same thing, but with a curve deformer. So select it, arm, curve, and we're always looking for the scripts or the operators that start with the armored prefix. So that, those are the ones that I made. So click on it and you can see we got a curve. By default, it's a NURBS curve, but you can switch it to Bezier right here. And then just start moving it to place, rotate X, rotate X if you want a slightly cleaner bend. I didn't really do that. And of course you can combine them both. And a cool thing about these scripts is that they automatically ignore other types of uh, selections or non-mesh selections. So even though I have the lattice selected here, I can still select everything and run the arm curve to form. And it's gonna ignore that lattice, nothing bad is gonna happen. As you can see, I can still uh, adjust this mesh. So that's not the case in Maya, for example. In Maya, you can easily add deformers on top of deformers and you can get some pretty crazy stuff. But uh, what I'm saying is you don't need to worry about selecting or deselecting stuff. Just make sure the mesh is selected and you're good to go. So we can do in reverse. We already have a curve deformer here and I can add the lattice later. Even though I had the curve selected and just switch the orientation to global. Now in this case, because we already have a bend, the lattice is much larger. So what I usually do is add the lattice first and then the curve second. But as I've already demonstrated before, you don't really need the lattice. You can do everything with just the curve deformer, for example. And another thing I do with these scripts is I don't have any parenting enabled and I prefer it this way so that, for example, I can select that lattice and move it up and down. As you can see, the mesh stays in place and I can get some pretty interesting effects. So let me increase the points of this lattice something like this and then just move this up and down <laughs> and just get different shapes like this so that's why I prefer both the lattice and the curves to uh, to not be the parents of the mesh in any way so I can scale and uh, transfer in the curve as well and not worry about the the mesh going with it this also means that I could for instance select the lattice and delete it and nothing is gonna move to some weird location because of some uh, parenting issue so I can delete this curve as well and get rid of that modifier too Note that after deleting the lattice and the curve, these objects still have lattice and curve to form modifiers, so those don't get deleted. So you can either remove them manually, but that might be a little time consuming if you have lots of objects, because you need to remove them from this one, then from this one, then from this one, if you never uh, merge these objects into one. So actually I have a script where you can just select a whole bunch of objects and then type arm remove modifiers, and then you can select what type of modifier you want to remove. So you can find it here, it's ordered uh, alphabetically. I already selected it. And that's to remove the lattice modifier from all of those objects. So you can use this to remove anything. For example, if you want to remove all of the subdivision surface modifiers, you can just select all of them and uh, run the same script. And it's not going to do anything until you click OK. So then I would just look for a subsurf. And in this case, I don't have anything. So it's just going to tell them, hey, no modifiers were removed. But I figure it could be a useful script to uh, mention. Oh, and finally, even though someone mentioned they had issues with this particular script, I couldn't really find anything wrong with it. So maybe it was just an old version. But let's say we're experimenting with the connectors and we're making some combinations of our own like I did here. 
So I literally just grabbed this, moved it over here, got rid of this connector, found this one over here, duplicated it, but to align it, we can use an operator that already exists in Blender that's called uh, align objects, or if you installed my scripts, you'll get this little tab right here. Again, someone said it didn't quite work, but works perfectly for me, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I just click align in X, and as you can see, boop, aligns perfectly in X, and we can do the same in Y. And uh, it's based off of a volume, so as you can see, because the tabs here are going forward, it's not aligned perfectly. So I'm thinking in the future I'm going to modify that script so that it works based off of uh, origins as well. That's a useful way of just experimenting with connectors. So again, Shift D, R, 180 degrees. I can just move it down. And uh, this is where I didn't apply the rotation last time. So if you want to, Control A, rotation. And that way you don't have to worry about uh, incorrect rotations when you're using local orientation or anything like that. If you have any questions, just put it in the comments.